A new product from the market leader is always cause for excitement and uh, of course when it comes from Hero it has also another connotation because we are usually talking about a very high volumes product as well and uh, the bike is of course right here with us and speaking to us right now is the man at the helm of the operations Mr. Pawan Manjal. Good to see you sir, always is. And, Pleasure. Um, catching up with you after the expo now so uh, it's it's been a bit of a gap since I uh, last met with you and you've come to us with good news I mean there's a there's a new product this particular segment has always been the backbone of hero strategy the name splendor is synonymous with that uh, you've already done I smart before uh, what was the the reason to move to 110 what we are seeing here today in the splendor I smart 110 is the first ever indigenously designed and developed motorcycle from Hero from its CIT in uh, Jaipur. From the new facility. From the new CIT. It's, it's a very, very proud moment, very fulfilling, very satisfying to, to see what we have achieved from uh, CIT in uh, Jaipur. And from what I see in terms of uh, the, the look, styling, the features, and more importantly, the performance, it gives me immense satisfaction and, and uh, a huge level of excitement uh, that going forward uh, this could become another uh, you know big selling model for Hero. Why iSmart? It's a new technology developed and patented uh, by Hero. Uh, very successful in the first model and uh, we surely intend to take this technology across uh, horizontally across various other models in our uh, current lineup and uh, going forward in uh, new products too. Uh, not necessarily in all of the products, but yeah, it makes sense at least in the commuter segment to use this technology. It's worked very well for us in the first one. Lots of questions spring to mind from that, but I have to quickly ask you this because very often there's a cynical view on products uh, and I think Hero unfairly gets the brunt of that cynical view, especially from the media, very often. So it'll be nice for you to set the record straight. People like to come at you with this question saying, this is a rehashed bike. This is, you know, you've taken what you had and you've added something to it. When you say that this is the all new product, the first one coming out of CIT, uh, how significantly different is that from what you've done in the past? Okay, let me first uh, uh, set uh, uh, at rest about the rehash thing. Yeah. Uh, most of the rehash products from Hero or from Hero Honda before have done exceedingly well. <laughs> yes, in terms of volume. So and whether rehash or whatever, <laughs> it, it's about doing well with the with the products. Now this particular one is not a rehash; it is completely new, new chassis, new frame, brand new engine, and brand new performance over its. Earlier brother, younger brother, Splendor, uh, iSmart 100cc, it has just 110cc, better performance, better fuel efficiency, better looks, better styling in every which way, not just over that one, but in its segment, in its class. Now comes the part about the technology itself and how you said you would like to soon start to take it across the portfolio. Um, there was a lot of talk today at the at the event. I think a lot of press asked you about the scooter segment and the kind of growth it's seeing. Uh, could that be a game changer for you in the scooter segment? Taking this maybe there first? Um, yeah, we, we are working on it already. We will, uh, as I said, we will use this technology where we believe it makes sense for the customer and for us and not necessarily on all our products. So we are working on a lot of products right now to bring in this technology. Your two new scooters that you brought in, uh, in the second half of last year, they've done really well for you. The uh, Maestro Edge, award-winning Maestro Edge, I can say proudly as well, yeah. um, has certainly uh, also, I think, put some of that cynicism and those doubts to rest because, again, it was the all-new change from mm. the last Maestro um, that you've done independently. All this talk about how much growth there is in scooters and how, you know, Honda especially has multiple models now and is trying to look at, a, you know, eyeing a larger market share overall in two-wheelers on the back of its scooter portfolio. Where do you see Hero fitting into that then, going forward? Is it multiple products that will do it? Is it trying to gain market share with one or two nameplates? So clearly, uh, Hero also uh, sees and realizes that uh, scooter is the bigger growing segment now in the two-wheeler uh, 
market and Hero has been uh, working on its scooter portfolio for some time now. Uh, of course, starting with the Pleasure uh, many years ago, which was a very successful product. Thereafter, uh, uh, we brought in the Maestro, which was a joint development with, uh, with Honda during the Hero Honda days. Uh, Maestro did very well. Uh, the Maestro Edge, again, the, the first ever designed and developed scooter from uh, the Hero Stable. Uh, in addition to the Maestro Edge, also the, the Duet, so we are trying to fill in the gaps with, uh, uh, within the scooter portfolio, within the segments where we were not present. And going forward, uh, we will need to step up in terms of this engine sizes, etc. The 125cc segment is also uh, growing in the scooters. We will be working on that area as well. So clearly, we are focusing a lot on scooters as well. We need to grow our numbers there. We need to have a bigger market share there and we are gradually uh, moving in that direction. Scooters and then of course new motorcycles, also higher capacity motorcycles, something that people keep asking you about, I know. Uh, a lot of that work now of course is underway in full swing at the CIT. For the facility itself, you spoke about the investments that you made when you opened the place, but um, now going into the future product development, what are the kind of spends you're looking at? Because one would imagine that there's still a large amount of money being spent because we're talking about a fairly large number of new models that you're looking to come to market with. Yeah, all I would say is that uh, our uh, uh, R&D spends will only keep going up uh, with time. Uh, from the previous years where the spend was more, more in terms of uh, the development cost we would pay to the erstwhile partner, uh, which was not considered as our R&D spend, but it was in, like in a way R&D spend being spent by somebody else, being paid by us, uh, but now we can count uh, uh, that in, in uh, percentages and going forward it would only uh, go up. Right now, because of the investments in setting up the CIT itself is, is uh, big, but going forward on the, on the research and development and engineering, we would continue to spend uh, more and more. The point we spoke offline about, I want to ask you that again about uh, development of products, keeping export markets in mind. Um, on the one hand, it's very nice to talk about that, and I know, again, it's a favorite question from the media, but uh, from a realistic point of view, uh, can you really look at completely, you know, disassociating from requirements in India and say, let's just do a product for, you know, like Mahindra has done with the Gen Z, for example. Could you do something like that? In the near term, not in the future, of course, of course you will. It makes uh, immense sense, a lot of sense for, for us to do that. Uh, you know, we are from the India strategy. We are in, 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 in a way we are a late entrant into the global markets when we look at the rest of the players out of India, let's say, or even Japan and China. And uh, to be able to um, get market shares, we need to do something unique like we did in the case of the pleasure. Yeah. Uh, so we would need to develop something exclusively for the global markets. Uh, having said that, uh, I've always now been saying that uh, we design, develop, engineer in CIT Jaipur for the globe. When I say for the globe, it's not the globe, globe, the global markets only. For me now, I include India in that globe. So whenever we are developing something for the Indian market, we are also looking at the requirement for the global markets and vice versa. When we develop something for the globe, the global markets, we would also look at the domestic market, Indian market here, using common platforms, different variants for both uh, markets. Is it also fair to say that that's also because the kind of markets you focused on going into are the high volume, you know, commuter led markets? They're not really sort of neat. I mean, something like I mentioned the Gen Z, but even if you were to do like the leap uh, kind of a product today, um, it would be in a really developed market, very small volume. You know, that's not really necessarily the strategy you're looking at anyway. Well, to start with, uh, uh, the reason why we went into the uh, African continent and the Central and Latin American uh, markets sense. was yeah. because we had products which could immediately, we could go into those markets and, and start um, and the building the there. brand there. The growth is there, the volume is there. The growth is there in those markets and the volumes are there. But going forward, we would surely uh, build models which uh, maybe are meant only for the 
western markets uh, not to say that some of some of uh, those models would also sell in in emerging markets uh, developing countries and get some volumes there. well in, even in india i mean the market is going to continue to mature so hopefully there will be space for we, we, we are already uh, the trend is in that direction <laughs>